Well, good day, everyone, and welcome to another episode of BlankCanvasTV.com. My name's Andre Knott, and together we are changing the way you see and experience art. And today I'm joined by a fantastic guest and wonderful friend of mine. Her name is Yvonne Spector, and Yvonne is an artist extraordinaire and also an art collector of fine works worldwide. And so I'd like to introduce her and welcome her to the show. Thanks for coming along. Thank you for asking me, Andre. Lovely to see you. You too. Fantastic. Look, we, uh, I think it's wonderful when we can present uh, people here on the show and teach uh, some of the people who are watching a little bit more about the, uh, the extraordinary talents of some of the artists out there, but also uh, in the world at large, but also talk about art collecting and why it is such a, an, an avid theme and something that people really enjoy. So I think that's a wonderful thing that we've got you here, Yvonne. Okay. Uh, I'll tell try me, my best. Tell me a little bit about your background. So, you, you, where were you born? How did you come to enjoy art, and how did you come to start creating art? Well, I was born in South Africa, mm -hmm. and I was always, I always did art, right? Even at school uh -huh. as a subject, and then I ended up being a fashion designer. Okay. And then when I went to England, I decided to go back to university, and I did a fine art degree. Right, okay. And did you find that when you did the fine art degree, it really enhanced your ability to understand a lot of the art that you were creating a bit more, or, or art in general? Uh, well, it certainly uh, helps you to understand art in general and all the history behind it. Right. And the philosophy. And, uh, and then with your own work, it helps you find what you are about. Right. As an artist. Okay. Primarily. Okay. And and I was speaking to Yvonne the other night. We were having dinner, a beautiful dinner at a delightful restaurant. My gosh, I think I what did I have? I had the uh, steak. The steak. Oh, so did I. Just divine. Oh, divine with an amazing, uh, amazing. Uh, what was it? It was lobster ragu on the top. Oh, yeah, gee, just it looked wonderful. Sublime. And did you have the chocolate pudding afterwards, because I did. You had, yes, we did. We both, <laughs> we both had the chocolate pudding. <laughs> <laughs> and Ken, what did he have? I can't. He had something with vanilla chocolate, I think. A white chocolate. Right, it was right. Amazing. He also had the steak. So yeah. I guess we all went. For we all went for the steak. Mm -hmm. But uh, we were talking the other night, and Yvonne was talking a bit about how at un at art university, art school, uh, they they kind of somewhat somewhat like I've never heard this described before. Like this, uh, something like military training. Can you tell me a bit more about what well, you meant by it's that? Not military training. What they do, you know, when you when you're in the military, I know, they I sort know. of build. They t you think you go in, but then they put you to pieces and build you up again so, and that's a little bit of what you experience at art school because everything you do is criticized of course right so you've got to be pretty strong to take that criticism okay and so what you meant is that you go in there with an idea that you know it exactly what's going on Correct. they and break you, you right down yeah, and you know nothing and then you realize you know nothing and then <laughs> they build you up with Correct. with art training again Correct. they take the ego right away from you they take the that's absolutely right because right. there's nothing more sobering then all doing a live class together and you're all putting your work up mm -hmm. and then suddenly you think, well, I'm not as good as I thought I was because that person <laughs> is so much better than me. <laughs> well, I think but you soon find your feet. Right. You well, I think that's a trait in art in, yes. in life in general, isn't it? That, you, uh, that there are always people better than you no Correct. matter what field it's in. You know, you just the race is not against other people but maybe against yourself and yes. uh, throughout life. Wonderful. And so, okay, so you started presenting art uh, at what age uh, for sale, would you say? Ooh, quite late in life. Mm -hmm. um, I would imagine. Well, let's not mention age then. Uh, <laughs> what, what period of your life, let's say? I would say that it was 1999 yes. that I finished mm -hmm. university. Okay. And I was very lucky to be taken on by a gallery a year after I finished. Okay. And by this stage, you were not in South Africa anymore. You were no, over no, in England, weren't you? I was you? living in London. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And which gallery took up your work? Um, at that point, uh, Scholar Fine Art took up my work. Yes. In uh, Bruton Place. Uh huh. Okay. And all right. And so, can we, and we'll talk a bit more about where you're presented now. But uh, first of all, can you describe a bit about your painting style and how you paint and how you create? Because we're going to show some images right here on the screen as well okay. of, of your work. But right. uh, maybe you can take us a bit through how mm -hmm. the process comes to be. You were mm -hmm. talking to me earlier off screen about how, you know, you wake up in the morning and you, you but I want to I hear about that. <laughs> can, you, can you tell our viewers right here? <laughs> well, I see that. The art process is not always an easy one. Right. And sometimes when you know, you have to throw yourself into that uh, studio. Mm -hmm. um, I get dressed, I put on my makeup, I walk around the house, find every job that 
possibly needs doing right. to prevent to go into the studio. You said, you said you almost <laughs> dread it. Because, dread it. And why do you dread, dread it, it, though? Because the creative process is a one that you have to really deep dig deep inside you. Yes. And you're always a little bit afraid. Right. And it's that fear and adrenaline, I think, that helps you to create something that's probably worth looking at at the end right and is that because you because your style is abstract you don't know exactly yes, no. what's going to come out of you right i don't i don't okay. and i start off with a blank canvas yes completely and kind of ties um, in with the show here doesn't it <laughs> <laughs> blank canvas tv.com <laughs> Start with a blank. Everyone's got a blank canvas, you know. Oh, yeah, we all a blank canvas. Everyone's a blank canvas until you start putting something on it, right? <laughs> Tell us about that. And uh, and then I start off with the blank canvas and I paint flat okay. on a, on two tripods or three, L depending on how big the canvas is going to be, from three foot to four foot to six foot. Yes. And uh, I don't know what I'm going to do on it until I make my first mark, and then it goes from there. And I work with acrylic mainly yes. and mixed media uh -huh. and I throw everything onto that canvas to make the marks sure. that please me and then I work with the marks and those marks turn into I've been told when you stand far away you can see exactly what it is but when you come close up to the canvas they just marks right and so do you start with any specific color not really. I will I will decide in my head what colour I want to work with that particular day. Yes. And but it can change as I'm painting because right. with the marks take me where I want to go and it's rather like a, than me taking the mark. It's a, it's a process of both really and together. It's a, it's a true creative a process all the it's way. A journey. Yeah. Yes. It, it's something akin if you look at her art to, uh, to to Yvonne's art as some something akin to Jackson Pollock and the style of the abstract expressionists and. Maybe. I, so, yes. Somewhat. I mean, there, there's elements and themes. You know, it's great that we uh, in this modern day get to stand on the shoulders of such giants from the past like that, and they've kind of pa paved the way, haven't they? But you said that earlier, like you, you're, pla you're painting flat on a f on a f yes, like this, and a lot of people don't really understand that process and no, what that's all about. I don't about. know why I do that, but that's just how I work. And mm -hmm. then when you lift it up, it's completely 3D. Right. And I don't know how I manage to do that myself, but I do. Okay. And when you look into my paintings, they, you're looking from a vast distance, almost sometimes as if you're flying above a landscape and looking down on it. Right. And that's quite often what my landscapes will look like. Right, and you're actually, you actually call them landscapes then? Well, they are, because they, they are African, mm -hmm. and they come from my roots, but they don't necessarily need to be African to the people who look at them. Right. But they do, people say, get the feeling of Africa when they look at my work. Somewhat of a, a slightly tinged or burnt countryside, something akin yes. to Australia, and yes, uh, like that yes. sort of thing as well. And also the vastness of it. Vastness, I wide open plains. plains and the space of the vastness of it. Yeah. Wonderful. We've been showing a few of those right here, and of course, people can check your art out on online, right? Yes, they can. I wanted mm -hmm. to say, say uh, maybe which which 